If master researcher Martin Gabella says he has removed the all-time greatest excuse to blow off exercising, being I don't have time, he released a new book all about high-intensity interval training called The One Minute Workout. While a workout that brief might seem too good to be true, Gibala says that it's all about high-intensity interval training, which essentially means short bursts of super high-intensity exertion. His research shows that intensity matches duration when it comes to a workout, and in his latest study, he found that sedentary people got the fitness benefits of 150 minutes of traditional endurance training by using an interval protocol that involved 80% less time. So is this all too good to be true? or is there science backing up his claims? According to the Canadian Physical Activity Guidelines, to achieve health benefits, adults aged 18 to 64 years old should take part in 150 minutes of moderate to vigorous intensity physical activity per week in bouts of 10 minutes or more. What does exercise do for your body? Well, it does a lot. It reduces stress, strengthens the heart and lungs, increases energy levels, helps you maintain and achieve a healthy body weight, and also it improves your outlook on life. Physical inactivity is a modifiable risk factor, as it is a risk factor that's under an individual's control. There is irrefutable evidence of the effectiveness of regular physical activity in the primary and secondary prevention of several chronic diseases, such as cardiovascular disease, diabetes, cancer, hypertension, and obesity. Dr. Gibala's study compared sprint interval training SIT, against moderate intensity continuous training MICT. Participants in the SIT group had to perform high intensity exercise for 1 minute for 10 minutes cumulative, while the MICT group performed 50 minutes of moderate continuous exercise. In order to measure the effects of the exercise, VO2 peak, insulin sensitivity, and skeletal mitochondrial content were measured. VOT peaks measure the maximum amount of oxygen the body can use for exercise, directly correlating with fitness capacity. Insulin sensitivity is important because of its relationship with diabetes. And lastly, skeletal mitochondrial content is important and linked with insulin sensitivity, metabolic health, and lipid metabolism. The SIT group consisted of nine males, the MCIT group consisted of 10 males and the control group of 6 males. The average age was 27 years old plus or minus 8 and the average BMI was 26 kg per meter squared plus or minus 6. All of them exercised for 3 sessions a week in their respective categories for a total of 12 weeks. For the results, VO2 peak increased in both groups by 19%. Insulin sensitivity uh, measured by intravenous glucose tolerance test before and after 72 hours of training was found to increase similarly in both groups. This also occurred with skeletal mitochondrial content. All results were statistically significant. So what is the take-home message? Well, according to Dr. Gibala's results, there is minimal difference between the two styles of exercise in respect to improved cardiometabolic health. The SIT group had a five-fold lower exercise volume and time commitment than the MICT group, yet showed similar results. As much of an eye-opening finding as it seems, there are some limitations to the study. First, Dr. Yibala only used a total of 25 individuals, 9 in SIT, 10 in MICT, and 6 as control. This sample size is not nearly large enough to extrapolate with confidence to the entire population. There could have been other outliers that would have had major impacts on the result. Second, Dr. Gibala only uses men in his study. While this may have been intentional, this again is a limitation. Dr. Gibala may need to include women in his next trial in order to capture more attention from the scientific community. Lastly, some suggestions to improve his study would be to include more markers for comparison. Does one minute of intense exercise burn the same amount of calories as 50 minutes of moderate continuous exercise? Also, how does this affect weight? Additional markers of stress response or immune response can also be measured. For example, are cortisol levels decreased or are T cells increased? All of these parameters are important for determining if these different exercise strategies have effects on one's health. CBC Hamilton has brought Dr. Gibala's research into light 
titling a recent article, One Minute Workout Promised to Get You Fit in 60 Second Bursts. We will now show you excerpts from the actual article and comment on them for its validity according to his study. One of the quote from the articles reads, in the book, he talks about how his research shows that intensity trumps duration when it comes to a workout. This is not entirely accurate. Intensity does not necessarily trump duration, as Dr. Gibella has just shown it has comparable results between the two. Although this is one word, this does give the wrong message to the public. Now the title of the article, which is, One Minute Workout Promises to Get You Fit in 60 Second Bursts. This title seems to be slightly exaggerated and may lead to slight confusion. Today when we think of someone being fit, we think of a toned body with apparent muscle groups showing. In Dr. Gibala's study, he does not allude to the fact that one minute high intensity bursts can provide that. Dr. Gibala's main measures are metabolic parameters. However, someone reading this title may have false impression that a one minute workout three times a day may provide them with an eventual aesthetic physique. A lot more work needs to be done in this field of research. Here are links you can check out to see more exercise research being done at McMaster.